Settlements aren't exactly the easiest things to get to grips with in Fallout 4, and supply lines can be even more confusing on top of that. But they are certainly worth spending some time with to set up because they do offer you a number of benefits and they could make you some sort of wasteland overlord if you do it right. So in this video I'll be making supply lines super easy for you to understand and I'll be offering you some tips along the way. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get stuck in. First things first, what are supply lines in the context of Fallout 4? Well, it's pretty simple really. Supply lines allow you to connect multiple settlements together, allowing you to share workshop inventory space, which means if you deposit something into one settlement's workshop, you can then access that resource in a connecting settlement without having to lug it all the way there yourself. But that's not all. Supply lines will also allow you to share excess food and water amongst connected settlements, meaning in theory, you could set up a giant farm at one settlement and all the other settlements that are connected to it would be happy and fed. And the benefits don't end there either. The settlers that you assign to these supply lines can help you out when you're out and about exploring if they happen to be nearby when you find yourself in a spot of bother. Setting up many supply lines throughout the Commonwealth means there will be many patrols, thus making your excursions a lot safer, as you'll never be too far away from an ally willing to help you and lend you a hand. Now, these provisioners are also useful if you spot them on your travels as well, because you can give them items to take with them, allowing you to clear your inventory space while still allowing those items to be available in your settlement network. So as you can see, there are a number of benefits you can get for spending just a little bit of time to set these supply lines up. But how exactly do you set them up in the first place? You do actually need to meet some criteria to set up supply lines in the first place, but they are fairly simple to do. First up, you obviously need to have multiple allied settlements, and more often than not, you'll come across these pretty darn easily just be by talking to Preston. Because, as we all know, he has told you about a settlement that needs your help. But, if you actually undertake these quests and help out some of the settlements, that is a good thing because it is an essential part of setting up supply lines. Because, for obvious reasons, the more allied settlements you have, the more supply lines you can create. The next thing you'll need to have unlocked is the first rank of the local leader perk, which you will find under the Charisma Tree at level 6. Because without this, supply lines will be locked away from you. It's also worth noting here that if you unlock ranks, sorry, rank 2 of local leader, you'll be able to add stores to your settlements and assign settlers to them to gain yourself some extra income. And I would recommend you do this as you progress throughout the game as well because, well, you can't have too many caps, can you? The third and final thing you need to do is actually have some settlers at your various settlements because you will need to sign provisioners to move resources between the two, or more. It is worth you also arming these settlers with weapons and a single bullet along with some half decent armour because this means they are much better equipped to help you out if they happen to be nearby and you're in a spot of bother. They won't die without these weapons or armour but they're certainly more useful to you if they come to your aid. And the reason I say just give them one single bullet with the weapon you give them is because that is all they need to effectively have unlimited ammo. And that pretty much sums up setting them up. Not that complicated really is it? Now let's move on to successfully managing these supply lines. I think one of my main tips when it comes to managing supply lines is not to worry too much about connecting every settlement to every other settlement because at the end of the day you don't need to and you end up using god knows how many provisioners in the process. In fact, it pays not to worry too much about specific lines at the end of the day anyway because, well, some people have different preferences but various options work equally just fine. For example, you could, if you want, set them up in a giant circle around the map, say starting from Sanctuary, then onto Red Rocket Truck Stop, then onto Starlight Drive-In, and so on, connecting each settlement in a clockwise direction until you bring it all the way back to Sanctuary. It would eventually look a little bit like this if you do that. You could also do it another way and go from Sanctuary to Starlight Drive-In, then on to Grey Garden, and from there, Hangman's Alley. And the final two in that thread could be Jamaica Plain and the Castle. This line will then make it super easy for you to branch off from there to loads of other settlements throughout the Commonwealth. So yeah, don't worry too much about the actual supply lines you create because everyone will have a different opinion about which way is the best. 
your main focus should be that all the settlements connect to the main cluster in some way or another so they can share resources between them all. I also think one essential thing to note is that whilst you're able to share resources across settlements connected via these supply lines, you can only use these resources when crafting and you won't be able to say pick these items up and place them into your inventory. So for example, let's say one settlement has a boatload of purified water. You can't then access that purified water at another settlement and put it into your inventory and then sell it on for caps. But you can use it as an ingredient to create vegetable starch from, for example. Another example would be if you've got a blood pack in settlement A and you happen to be in settlement B. You can't take that blood pack out of the workshop to heal yourself, but you can use it to craft a stim pack assuming you have the other resource available to you as well. It could be classed as a slight limitation of supply lines, I guess, but it's no big deal because most of the time you're building up a settlement and not accessing other settlements resources to place in your inventory. If you've gotten this round of video folks and you think there are some lesser known supply line tips that I've missed out, but you think they're worthy of mentioning, why don't you guys leave a comment below letting us know what that tip or caveat is. The more tips we can get for supply lines in the comments section of this video, the better. And that's all for today folks, there is everything you need to know about setting up and running supply lines in Fallout 4. See, it's not overly complicated is it? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. And if you are still here, it would be totally awesome if you could support my channel by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. You can now become a channel member as well and as always, thank you for watching this video and I will catch you in the next one.